Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to talk all about what it means when sunscreens and skincare products claim to protect your skin against visible light, against blue light, against your smartphone. I know many of you worry about the potential for damage to the skin through exposure to tablets and your electronic devices. You ask me, do I need to be wearing sunscreen 24 seven to protect against this? So in today's video, I am going to address all of these questions and hopefully shed some light, no pun intended, on the role of visible light in uh, skin and skin health. If you shop for sunscreen and or skincare, chances are you at least have some understanding of the fact that we need to be protecting our skin from ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun. Ultraviolet radiation burns our skin, suppresses the immune system in our skin, causes mutations in the keratinocyte DNA of our skin. It also uh, damages collagen and leads to photoaging, as well as irritation, photosensitivity, and driving conditions like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma. The majority of the ultraviolet radiation that we're exposed to comes from the sun on a daily basis. Now, what about visible light though? Visible light also comes from the sun. Visible light is uh, another part of the electromagnetic spectrum emitted from the sun that hits earth and hits our skin and potentially has some consequences, which I'll elaborate on in today's video. Visible light is the light that you see with your eyes. Ultraviolet radiation, on the other hand, you never really perceive. But ultraviolet radiation isn't something that you detect with your eyes. And it's not what you feel as heat, and it's not what you see as light. What you see as light is visible light that comes from the sun. And what you feel as heat is infrared radiation from the sun. Now, while ultraviolet radiation, specifically UVA, will lead to hyperpigmentation and contribute to that, we also know that visible light on top of ultraviolet radiation further drives hyperpigmentation, specifically in darker skin types. And it seems as though fairer skin types, individuals, for example, who never, who never tan, who always burn, they, um, they are, their skin is not affected by, by visible light that we know of in terms of hyperpigmentation. It seems to be restricted to darker skin types. But it's not all colors of the rainbow that lead to hyperpigmentation. It's specifically shorter wavelengths of visible light in the blue light spectrum. Blue light, 415 nanometers, is a propigmenting wavelength. Exposure to visible light, blue light, leads to a type of hyperpigmentation, specifically in darker skin types, that comes on more quickly and is more long-lasting than the hyperpigmentation that is achieved through exposure to UV, UV from the sun. So two things drive hyperpigmentation in the skin in darker skin types. UV, specifically UVA, and visible light, specifically blue light, at 415 nanometers. The sun is our greatest source of both UVA as well as visible light that can contribute to your hyperpigmentation. And it's important for you to understand that the wavelengths of UV, UVA, as well as visible light that contribute to hyperpigmentation will come through window glass and affect your skin, will come through clouds. And so even when you're indoors most of the day, even when it's cloudy out, even when it's not particularly sunny, these wavelengths are still hitting your skin and contributing to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma if you are a darker skin type you are still being exposed to these pro-pigmenting wavelengths of UV and visible light, namely blue light. We know a little bit specifically about the mechanism of how this occurs. It appears as though the melanocytes, which are the cells in the skin that make pigment, the melanocytes of people with darker skin types have a protein called opsin-3 that is particularly sensitive to blue light and leads to this upregulation of pigment production and a very persistent and intense early onset hyperpigmentation. Combined with UVA that we also get from the sun, it's like a double, double hitter uh, for really intense persistent hyperpigmentation, whether that be for melasma and or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. In order to get pro-pigmentation levels of visible light from the sun, you only need about an hour and a half of sun exposure throughout the day. So you only need about an hour and a half of sun exposure to 
to be exposed to a pro-pigmenting dosage of that specific wavelength. So it's not only the wavelength of the visible light, the blue light, but it's also the dosage that you get. And the sun delivers a powerful and intense dosage of that. But with technology, we see a lot more blue light from our smartphones, from our devices, our tablets, and what have you. And I think probably that's why you're watching this video. You want to know, do we need to be concerned about those? So just to give you a little frame of reference, the dosage of blue light that we get from the sun, as I said, is very intense. Uh, it's referred to as high energy visible light, by the way. If you ever see HEV, that's what they're referring to, blue light. So from the sun, we get about 6.3 milliwatts per centimeter square surface area of that pro-pigmenting dose just from visible light from the sun. How does that compare to a smartphone, an LED device? Uh, well, the emissions from those devices are actually pretty low in comparison to what you're getting from the sun all of the time. Uh, specifically, it's around 30 microwatts per centimeter square. So, you know, on the level of a thousand fold lower than than what you're getting from the sun. And it's estimated that you would need several days and nights of continuous exposure to your, to your smartphone, for example, in order to obtain the pro-pigmenting dose of blue light. Specifically, it's estimated you would need to have about 150 hours of continuous exposure. It's more important for you to recognize that the majority of the, the pro-pigmenting dosage that you're getting actually comes from the sun and the degree to which your smartphones and tablets contribute to that is probably quite marginal. But, you know, we only know so much at this point. The finding that visible light contributes to hyperpigmentation and how that occurs is still pretty new and, you know, an exciting area of science. So at this point, I can't really tell you guys too much how worried you should be about visible light, but you definitely should be worried about it from, from the sun not only the visible light, but also the ultraviolet radiation. So protecting your skin from the sun should remain at the forefront of your priority list for skin health. How do you protect your skin though against these wavelengths of visible light? Do you wear sunscreen? Well, to be honest, the majority of sunscreens will not protect you against visible light. Uh, chemical sunscreens do not protect against visible light at all. They can protect against UVA, the wavelengths that, of the ultraviolet radiation that contribute to hyperpigmentation and melasma, but they won't protect against visible light. And so then you're left with physical sunscreens. Physical sunscreens have the active ingredients zinc and titanium dioxide. Of those two active sunscreen ingredients, only zinc oxide has the potential to protect against visible light. And by potential, I mean it has to be a certain size. So small particles of zinc oxide in your sunscreen that are the size 40 nanometers, they're, those are the really nice, nice aesthetic sunscreens that don't leave much of a cast. Yeah, those really only protect against UV and UVB and you know a little bit of UVA. The larger the particles, the better they are at protecting against UVA, but still not visible light. So Zinc oxide sunscreen particles that are around 100 nanometers will get you more, not only UVB, of course, but even better for UVA. So larger, but that's going to be more of a cast. The, the zinc oxide, however, that's very large, greater than 200 nanometers, that is what it takes to protect against not only UVB, UVA, but also visible light. And that size of zinc oxide particles is basically white paste. So nobody is going to appreciate that aesthetic. So it's really hard actually to formulate a sunscreen that's going to be cosmetically acceptable to people that will protect um, against visible light. As a side note, many of you will ask me, what about chemical sunscreens in Europe or Japan, those that have tinosorb and mexoril, are they good for hyperpigmentation and melasma? Those chemical sunscreens and those chemical sunscreen filters do a very sophisticated job blocking against UVA, more so than the chemical filters that are allowed in sunscreens sold in the States that protect against UVA, namely avobenzone. So they do a better or a more reliable and consistent uh, job of protecting against that UVA dosage, but they don't protect against visible light. Only 
large particle zinc oxide. It's the only active sunscreen ingredient that will protect against visible light. And so you're left with, with, with the white paste as an option. But we've learned, however, that an inactive ingredient in sunscreens can provide additional, additional protection against visible light only. Uh, and that is iron oxides. Iron oxides are frequently added to tinted sunscreens and it has been shown that sunscreens formulated with iron oxides will help people with hyperpigmentation and melasma get better faster and not have their disease worsen by exposure to visible light. So they offer more protection against visible light than just sunscreen alone, uh, than just zinc oxide sunscreen alone. Iron oxides you will see listed in the inactive ingredient list. <clears throat> and specifically, iron oxides included in the product at greater than 3% have been shown to protect against visible light. And I'm telling you that because while it's never super transparent what the percentage of iron oxides is in a product, we do know that the percentage does matter. And the reason the percentage of iron oxides, we know it matters, is that we've, we've, we've got some data from smaller studies looking at women who wore a non-tinted sunscreen and covered it with makeup that, con that contained iron oxides. And the makeup did not have this protective effect that sunscreens tinted with iron oxides greater than 3% had. So in other words, the percentage matters and also, as a side note, makeup doesn't seem to cut it uh, in terms of protecting you from visible light. So sunscreens that claim to protect against visible light, they should either have non-nano large particle zinc oxide or iron oxides, presumably greater than 3%, as those are the only ingredients that have been shown to block or to be helpful for blocking the pro-pigmenting doses of visible light. Outside of sunscreen, the other thing that can be done to protect the skin against pro-pigmenting doses of visible light is physical protection with clothing and or an opaque dressing. Specifically, we have studies looking at individuals who had uh, some wounding to their skin. Uh, if they covered the area with an opaque dressing as opposed to a more transparent dressing, they had almost no post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation with their healing, as opposed to those who had the transparent. So opaque dressings, bandages can protect, but I mean, you obviously can't go around with a bandage, you know, bandage all over your entire face. But I am telling you that because say, for example, you're in a situation where maybe you have a pimple and you know it's going to heal with hyperpigmentation, covering, with, covering it with an opaque dressing is, is an option to consider to block not only ultraviolet radiation that will contribute to hyperpigmentation and also impair the healing of your acne under there, but also can protect it from hyperpigmentation from visible light. So that's why I'm telling you the, the point about the opaque dressing. No, I don't expect people to walk around, you know, completely in, in mummy, you know, mummified. But physical clothing, long sleeves, hats, things that protect your, your skin from, from exposure will also protect against against visible light. I have a video talking about sun protective clothing, the different types of weaves and fabrics, so check that video out. But clothing is another option. Outside of the white paste zinc sunscreen and sunscreens with 3% or higher iron oxides, the other, and, and physical, physical means clothing, the other area of research that is compelling and interesting is looking at an antioxidant supplement called Polypodium leucomotus or fern block. I have a video talking about this um, supplement. It's called sunscreen pills. So make sure you check that out. But Polypodium leucomotus or fern block is an antioxidant which has been shown uh, to reduce the effects of ultraviolet radiation on the skin, specifically reduce things like redness and markers of DNA damage. Those studies have mostly been done in people who are fairer complexion and more prone to burns. 
And so up until this point, fern block has been something that has been discussed for people who are really sensitive to developing a sunburn, people with polymorphous light eruption, a type of photosensitive disease. But we now have new research coming out, it's still very preliminary, that suggests that supplementing with polypodium leucomotus or fern block, also called heliocare, also might offer some additional protection against visible light induced hyperpigmentation. Still very preliminary, but as I said in, in my video on the sunscreen pills, it doesn't mean, if you take polypodium leucomotus or fern block, it is not a replacement for sun protection. It's not enough on its own. It's merely something else that could be considered and is overall pretty safe. Uh, it's, it's something that you, know, you could consider to even buffer even more against visible light exposure. Um, it is pretty expensive and you know I always get questions can I recommend specific brands really the only brand that I recommend is Heliocare only because they do all of the studies and the majority of the literature is with Heliocare supplements um, so you know it's all industry biased obviously but supplements as I've said before they're not regulated so it's always hard to know who's good and who's not and given that we at least have that data from Heliocare and it's the majority of the data we have with polypodium leucomotus, I feel more confident in that particular supplement. But it is, you know, obviously biased. But take home points from this video. Propigmenting doses of visible light affect people of darker skin types, not necessarily fairer skin types. And they affect darker skin types by contributing to a more early onset and a more long lasting type of hyperpigmentation. The only sunscreen ingredients that can effectively reduce the exposure to visible light are large particle zinc oxide and the inactive ingredient iron oxide. Then comes into play physical means like clothing and possibly, potentially, polypodium leucomotus. The dosage of visible light that you get from a smartphone or your tablet is very low in comparison to what you're getting on a day-to-day -day basis from the sun. So make sun protection a priority over smartphone protection. But visible light does have one other impact for our overall health outside of just directly onto the skin, and that is visible light. Exposure to visible light through your smartphones, tablets, and devices can skew and alter the release of melatonin from the brain at nighttime. Melatonin is the hormone that tells our body to go to sleep. And looking at your tablets late at night and exposure uh, just through your eyes from that blue light will delay melatonin release and result in impaired sleep and poor, poor onset of sleep. I have a video talking about melatonin and melatonin supplements, but uh, melatonin and our sleep cycle are very important parts of our health that directly impact our skin as well. So I would say a plug for dialing down on your smartphone use, your tablet use, turning those things off early on in the evening is to preserve the quality of your sleep. And that quality of your sleep quality directly impacts your overall skin health, um, of course. So, you know, that would, be, that would be a reason to monitor your screen time. But in terms of protecting your skin, make sun protection a priority. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys as far as discussing visible light, blue light, why, why it's important, what it leads to, um, and answering your questions. Again, check my description box. I'll put my references. I'll also put a listing of some sunscreens that are zinc oxide and or have iron oxides in them uh, that are good for people with hyperpigmentation and or melasma. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.